Nitro Carga, that sounds so much more deadly than a flame charge. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Ox here with another video. If you're new to the channel, we do upload Pokemon Go content mostly related to PvP. So please consider subscribing to the channel if that is of interest to you. And if you're a returning subscriber like Mike Smith, thank you for the support. In today's video, we are taking a look at a shoutcast for the Ultra Premier Cup with some battles submitted to the channel by Chris Rodriguez 27 So shout out to you. Thank you for the submission. And this is a triple XL team. Now, I know what a lot of you are thinking. A lot of you don't really support the XL teams in Ultra Premier Cup, and that is a fair point. XL Pokemon are definitely a topic of discussion for not only the Ultra League, but Go Battle League in general. Niantic may have made a mistake in introducing them but at the same time we can't get mad at players for using XL Pokemon when it is available in the game. That is something that Niantic would need to take blame for for allowing this sort of disparity between XL Pokemon on XL Pokemon and the advantages that it does bring. So personally I feel that if a player does have XL Pokemon available to them then they should be able to use them as they want right. They worked hard to get those Pokemon you should be able to use them. They're not banned so obviously they are allowed. There's nothing illegal in using XL Pokemon. Whether or not XL XL Pokemon should be allowed, that's a different topic for discussion and that's something that we can't get mad at the players for, that's something that Niantic has to take the burden for. So for this particular video, the three Pokemon that are being used is Altaria, Ferrothorn, and Talonflame. Talonflame already had a community day so it is a bit more accessible and Altaria is coming up with a community day in the coming weeks so that's a Pokemon that a lot of you are going to be able to work towards and I thought it would be worth showcasing for today's video to give you sort of a glimpse at how it performs forms in the Ultra Premier Cup. If you guys enjoy this type of content, please make sure you smash that like button, it really helps the channel grow. Leave a comment in the comment section down below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and without any further ado, let's jump into the first battle right now. Alright, so let's jump into the first battle here. We are leading a best buddy Altaria, and we got some more Spanish battles here, and what the heck is this? Gothitelle in the Ultra Premier Cup. This seems like a pretty spicy pick, I've never battled one of these. I don't actually know what moveset this thing is running. Uh, the quick move looks like it is Confusion, so this seems like a pretty solid matchup for Altaria. Your opponent lets that go through, and we're going to see what the first move is, I guess. So let's see, they throw Avalancha, so that's a Rock Slide right there. And that does a lot of damage, but Altaria should be okay here. Opponent swaps out into Clefable, and we see the Talon Flame come out here. So this is a very solid matchup to be in for the Talon Flame does allow the extra charm to go through there. Of course, charm is pretty difficult to deny because the audio and animation seems to be out of sync. I actually think if you're looking to fast move deny, having the audio turned on for your battles is a lot of help. So that's one thing I would consider doing. As you can see here, it looks like the talent claim is actually going for the farm down completely. Over 100 energy at this point, able to farm down. That is pretty clutch right there and has two moves ready. Going for the flame charge here the first time. And what did they bring in here? They brought back in the goth to tell. Okay, so they're gonna have two moves here. The confusion comes through, but this flame charge is going to register first. That gets the second shield, and now the talent flame is going to go down before the flame charge, or sorry, before the incinerate goes through. Now going to come in with the Pharaoh Thorn here, and the opponent swaps out into an Umbreon, so this game is looking like it's probably over here with the shield advantage for Ferrothorn. This is a pretty bulky beast right here in the Ferrothorn, choosing not to shield up here against the Umbreon. We see a foul play come through there. That would have been Dark Pulse actually. I might be wrong, but it looks like to me that that translation would translate to Dark Pulse because I see Pulse though, so I'm assuming that's Dark Pulse there, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe my Spanish viewers Spanish viewers can let me know in the comment section, but that does look like it is Dark Pulse going for the Power Whip right here. And that is going to go through. I would imagine after this, swap out into the Altaria, at which point the Altaria should be able to farm down. Yep, that's what he does. And the opponent is not swapping out. Has the Sky Attack ready, going to throw that. That should be enough to knock out the Gothitelle here and take this first game. So off to a 1-0 start here in the first set. Triple XL team looking super powerful. They're going up against a pretty spicy lead there in the first matchup. We got the real Pete here in the second matchup. Altaria into Magnezone. So Magnezone is uh, 
pretty challenging of a lead here in particular. Let's see how he's going to play this out. Altair, of course, has a pretty poor matchup, but the back line doesn't necessarily... I mean, Feral Thorn's okay, but can't really swap out into, into the Talon Flame here because that matchup is still kind of close. So going to throw the move here, gets hit by the Wild Charge, and going for the Dragon Pulse here, okay? So going for the move that does more damage, and it does get the shield from the Magnezone. So Altair is going to shield up here in return. And let's see if this Altair is able to get to the next move. These Dragon Breaths are going to be doing a bit more damage now because of the debuff. This is probably going to be a Mirror Shot, which probably will KO the Altair from this range. It does, oh no, it doesn't. Swaps out into Feral Thorn. And now the Magnezone staying in, so it's a little bit interesting here. Probably going to go for the Wild Charge, I'd assume. No, they go for the Mirror Shot, so they're trying to get the Attack Drop there, which they did not get, it looks like. And going to go for the Power Whip here, so... This Feral Thorn running Mirror Shot and Power Whip, that is going to knock out the Magnezone there. And we see Alakazam come in, so Alakazam is running Counter, I'd imagine, and Fire Punch, which would be a threat to this Feral Thorn. Is this running Counter? Yeah, it looks like it's Counter. And going to get to a Fire Punch here, let's see if the Feral Thorn decides to shield here. No, they're going to let it go through and probably come in with the Talon Flame. No, coming in with the... Okay, so that... Okay, I don't know what happened there. But came with Altair and it looks like the Venusaur farmed it down before it got off a move. But this is obviously an amazing situation to be in here. Talonflame versus Venusaur. Nitro Carga. That sounds so much more deadly than a Flame Charge. So Talonflame should have a very solid match right here. We see a Frenzy Plant come through there. And another move going to come through. I don't think Sludge Bomb will KO anyway. So Talonflame looking pretty good here. There is the Sludge Bomb. Does a lot. But no problem for the Talon Flame. Able to farm down before the Venusaur gets to another move. It has the overkill going here on the Alakazam with the Brave Bird. This is going to be doing about 600 damage to the Alakazam and taking that game right there. Off to a 2 0 start. Zack Attack 1295. In the next matchup, we got the Altaria once more into a Charizard. Now, if Charizard is running Fire Spin, pretty solid matchup. If it's running Dragon Breath, very bad matchup, and it does look like it is Dragon Breath, so the opponent swaps out into Feral Thorn. So, Feral Thorn into Charizard is not exactly a safe switch. And the Charizard could stay in there and win that matchup, but they do have a fighter in the back, which they bring out. And this actually works out pretty well for Christopher right here because he does draw out the fighting type, which means that ideally we'll be able to get some farm with one of the flying types in the back. The problem is Charizard is a pretty good matchup in general against this entire team, assuming that there are shields on both sides. So not the greatest thing here. Does survive that Mud Bomb here, going to get off this Mirror Shot. Is this actually going to be enough to knock out the Toxic Croak? Probably wouldn't want it to be actually. And the opponent lets that go through and farms down. So not too much farm here for the Altaria, which isn't optimal actually. So maybe it would have been better to leave some health on that Toxic Croak. However, should be okay here, maybe. I mean, actually, not that okay. This looks like a pretty rough position to be in. Of course, the Dragon Claws going to be really hurting the Altaria here, whereas the Sky Attack does hurt, but it's going to take longer to get to that than it does to get to Dragon Claws. So, not an optimal position to be in. Swaps out into Talon Flame here. And the Charizard looks like it is staying in. So, farming a lot here. And going to shield up this move here, probably look to get off this Flame Charge, which I do not think is going to be enough. To, it's obviously not going to be enough to KO the Charizard here. But it does get a shield. And able to get to... No, the Charizard's going to get to the move first. Dragon Claw, probably not going to KO. And another Nitro Carga coming out here. Let's see if this will be enough to take out the Charizard with... The boost in attack, no it's not, but one incinerate, no not able to get to it, so Talonflame is going to go down here, Altair will come back in and farm down, but unless this is like something that's one shot by a sky attack, not going to, it's actually a tan growth, but I don't think sky attack is going to be enough to KO the grass type here, so actually kind of had what he wanted in the back there, and that also explains why the Charizard didn't want to swap out, but Rock Slide would come out, KO the Altaria, and just backs out of the game. So 2-1 here, Fast QQ in the next matchup, we got Altaria into a Typhlosion, so this is a beautiful lead for Altaria of course. Let's see what Typhlosion is running here, looks like it is Incinerate, so this is an even better matchup for the Altaria than if it had Shadow Claw, but either way it's not going to make much of a difference. 
going for the sky attack here and the typhlosion is going to let that go through and swap out into a bomb of snow oh boy this is not good this is one of the dangers in using a pokemon like a bomb of snow as a safe switch of course it hits very hard and it hits very quick but if you get something like a talent flame to come out and count you it's going to be really rough so it does get the boosted opponent actually shields that which means this talent flame is going to get even more farm here with the boosted attack things are not looking good for the opponent right now going to shield up that weather ball farms down completely has a move ready the opponent does not want the smoke they back out el no quiere el humo and let's move into the next matchup gundam knight air here so we got Alteria into Jellicent. This is a pretty this is a pretty bad lead if they're running Ice Beam here. So let's see. It is Hex. And is it going to be Bubble Beam, Shadow Ball, Ice Beam, Shadow Ball, Bubble Beam, Ice Beam? I guess that could be a thing as well. It is a Bubble Beam. Okay, so maybe they do not have Ice Beam then, which would actually be very good for this Alteria. And actually be enough to flip this match, I believe. So the opponent does swap out into Galvantula. Now remember, this Altaria is actually debuffed at this point. So while this is a pretty good matchup for Altaria in general, we do have to take the attack debuff into consideration here. So going for the Sky Attack, this is going to be doing significantly less damage now. It does get the shield from the Galvantula though. And of course, the Talonflame in the back has a pretty neutral matchup in general against Galvantula. The Feral Thorn also somewhat neutral so staying in here with the Alterian able to get to that dragon pulse there so going to go for this right here on the galvantula they do shield that up and now let's see what they're going to come in with coming in with the feral thorn here to absorb the damages galvantula does have a lot of energy so they don't want to take that onto the town flame there we see the lunge come through and going straight for the power whip here just wants to get rid of this galvantula as quickly as possible and what is going to come back in now it is the alolan nine tail so swapping out into the talon flame jellison comes in so not a great matchup for talon flame here however there is still a shield and we see the bubble beam come through you can see bubble beams actually doing so much damage to talon flame and going straight for the brave bird here that actually does not ko which means this next bubble beam is going to be doing significant damage here Oh my goodness, all that just from a bubble beam. Able to farm down though, and should be able to get to a flame charge here. The incinerate goes through, so you shield this up. Flame charge should be enough, or not enough to KO, but this should be enough damage here to put the nine seals very low. And then the Feral Thorn comes through. Actually, that wasn't a lot of damage. I, I forgot that the Talon Flame was actually debuffed two times by bubble beam, so that's why it didn't do a lot of damage. But Feral Thorn here. Very good matchup against the Nine Tails. One mirror shot will be enough. 2 KO could definitely survive one more Weather Ball as well. So going to be able to outpace to this mirror shot. This will be enough to knock out the Nine Tails and going to bounce back, take that game after a tough loss in the previous matchup. Off to a 3-1 start here. Ryu in the next match. So let's see what we got here. We got a Pharaoh Thorn into Machamp. So this is actually. I believe this is the bonus battle and was that five battles i believe that was five battles before so this should be the sixth battle of the bonus unless i forgot one of the battles which if i did i apologize but i'm pretty sure that was five prior to this so went four and one and this is the sixth battle with the feral thorn lead which is the bonus battle here so let's see how this matchup goes here we see drift bloom come into the talon flame so this is a uh, pretty neutral matchup in general not too bad a talon flame could definitely win this match so going for the flame charges here and still has two shields the i think at this point the drift bloom just pretty much has to go straight icy wins especially if you expect the talon flame to shield which it is doing but they're going for the shadow ball here so one more flame charge is going to go through and with the opponent throwing shadow ball instead of icy wind the attack keeps going up here so let's see what the opponent does here I would probably expect another Icy Wind. They go for another Shadow Ball, so they're going for the KO here. And oh my goodness, this Machamp coming in to sacrifice itself to the Talon Flame God. It's going to get one shot by the Brave Bird. Boom! There it is. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Talon Flame about to sweep this entire team right here with the Flame Charge. One shots the Machamp, one shots the Venusaur. Can it finish off the Drift Bloom? Yes, it can. Talon Flame, legitimate sweep right there. Absolutely crazy battles. 
All right, so I did look back on the video. That was in fact six battles. So went four and one plus the bonus battle right there. Very entertaining battles right there with the triple XL team. You guys saw Alteria is pretty much a beast in the lead here. So you definitely want to take advantage of that community day, which is coming up for it. Get a lot of candy, get the XL candy if you can, and look towards powering one up for the Ultra League. If you guys enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like, commenting, subscribing to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.